<laughs> Hi, I'm back. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another stream. This one is T and Steve play Hava. We will be playing new Gen Con releases in this stream. Um, I am just sending out some social media stuff to let people know that we're live. But if you watched the last one, Um, if you watched the last one, oh yay! I'm glad Mallory had fun. Look at this picture. This is so cute. Mallory watched it, our stream. That was Aww. Mallory. Ah, oh, so cute. So we just did a we just did a stream um, where we played through the new toddler games. No, those stay there. Oh. Don't touch anything. <laughs> Steve's trying to be helpful. Um, we just did a stream where we played through the new toddler games oh steve went to close all the windows in the house we don't have um our house is very old our house is 90 years old it's not new like paul's aunt's house um and uh we we just put in new windows which was great all the old windows none of them opened <laughs> so uh we open all our windows at night so it gets cool in the house and then at a certain point in the day around 9 a.m we have to close them all to keep the coolness in the house um, and it actually works really, really well. It's been like in the nineties for the last mm -hmm. week or so, but our house really stays in like the mid seventies. Uh, and we have AC upstairs cause the attic, it's very hot, especially with the studio not lights. Well yeah, I know the attic is not a great space. So we have AC for the attic, but the rest of the house, we don't have AC. So the windows being closed are, is crucial for making sure mm -hmm. the house stays. So we're going to play the new releases that came from Hava. Um, if you, I'm just going to pull out like everything that we did new at Gen Con. That's a yellow box game um, that we announced. You see in a flash in a flash firefighters. There we go. And then the other two are over here. So we have games everywhere, by the way. <laughs> um, so we have, boop, we have a lot of new games that just released. So we have Barnyard Bunch, which is a cooperative game. We have Color It, which is a competitive game. We have Anna Flash Firefighters, which is also there. And then of course, we have Animal Upon Animal Unicorns and Animal Upon Animal Dinos. Um, so we have these four new releases. Every day of Gen Con, we have had a play along stream of Color It. Girls Game Shelf does a play along stream of Color It. We've had four of them so far because one morning they also, they also streamed in the morning. Um, and so those have been super fun. If you're interested in Color It, which is a roll and write for ages four and up, you can actually do a play along with Girls Game Shelf this afternoon at 3 p.m. East or 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. So you can tune in and play there. So we're not going to play this one because I have been playing, I've been Color It along every day. Um, but if you're interested in a roll and write for four and up, this is fantastic. And also, if you can't make it to that stream, if you search on YouTube for Color It Play Along, the YouTube channel before you play, Monique and Naveen, they actually did a play along. And it's about 13, 15 minutes, and you can tune in and watch. And they'll teach you how to play it. And it's recorded, and you can play along with it. So you can pause it and unpause and... And that kind of stuff. You trying not to yawn? Yeah, I was trying to yawn. <laughs> um, and with those, with that play on, can you print out a sheet to play? You can. And there's links to the sheets to color on our website. So, so you don't need a copy of the game. To yeah. Play so we're not going to play color it, but this was one of our, it's not out technically. It missed the arrival date for us to release it at Gen Con online, but it arrived on Friday at our warehouse, which means it technically arrived during Gen Con Online, but we weren't able to get it loaded into our system so that you all could purchase it. So that's kind of a bummer, but Gen uh, Color It will be available on the website in about two weeks, maybe a week. So if you've been watching the Color It streams or play on streams and you're interested, just keep that in, in mind and check back in later for that. Is there a My Very First Games game publisher warehouse? <laughs> I think that's coming soon. Marcus, get on that. <laughs> I don't know if Marcus is Fork in the chat. Forklifts, containers of games. Yeah, you have to like rearrange the games so they all fit. Um, yeah, so now we have these games left. 
too many to put on this the camera. There we go. So we have these four games um, are the yellow box games that we released this Gen Con online. Uh, you can find all of these on the Gen Con, um, the Hobby USA, the Hobby USA store for Gen Con, um, and the link for that is. Um, doo -doo -doo. You can find the links for all of our Haba stuff um, here and all of our Gen Con events. So if you're interested in checking out the store on these, but we're going to play these. We're going to play all these this morning and we have 50 minutes left to do it. And I believe in us. Mm -hmm. Does did, did building do site, then Barnyard Bunch, then in a flash firefighters tell a story? <laughs> no, uh, no, okay. no, no. The, where this is a training exercise. Ah, uh, it's a training Yeah, exercise. the okay. hay bales are on fire at the farm, and we're racing, we're competing to put out the hay bales the fastest. Um, so that's, I love a good training it's, exercise. It's a training exercise. So so we are, we're just missing firefighters. We, yeah, well, we have, we have this one. Oh, you haven't picked up firefighters. Oh, I get it, I get it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and play these this morning. Um, if we don't make it to playing both of these, we might do a combined game um, of these two. Jesse and I actually played a combined game of Animal Pond Animal Dinos and Animal Pond Animal Unicorns on Thursday. So if we don't get to these and you're interested in what these play like and, and some of the variants that you can play with these two Animal Pond Animal games, you can go check the Twitch videos. If you go on our Twitch channel and you click videos, it'll show you the past videos. And on Thursday, Jesse and I played this one, these two. So I'm going to put these to the side for now. And I think we should start with Barnyard Bunch. Mm -hmm. We'll just start with the one for Fornup. So Barnyard Bunch is for four and up. And this is a cooperative game. We're working together. We are helping the farmer try and keep all the animals on the farm. We're, the gate has been left open. The farmer has left the gate open. And Here, why don't I do that? Yeah, so normally the barn is 3D and you'd have it standing in the middle. But because of the camera that we have, we're going to, um, we're just gonna have the, the barn laying down. So. Just like Bruno. <laughs> Bruno was laying down this morning too. There we go. Uh, so we have, people are suggesting the combined unicorns thing. Oh, botch games. Yeah, our Haba shipping team is fantastic. So they were saying they ordered the games on Wednesday and they arrived in about two days. Or they ordered on Thursday and they arrived in about two days. Um, Do you need the rules? I don't need the rules. <laughs> I don't need the rules. So we have these like tracks. So what we're gonna do is we put the board in the middle, we put an animal on each board, and so these are the little animal meeples we have. Um, normally you would sit them up like that, but for camera reasons, we're gonna lay them down. And you'll just randomly put them around the farm. Um, and, oops, I was making sure all the meeples are lined up straight. And the frog! Okay, and then Oops. you're gonna put the strips, it doesn't matter which way they go, um, but I do recommend don't do, like, don't match up colors. It's not, you don't have to worry about it, but I just would recommend um, not doing that. These meeples make me want to play uh, an Agricola game. They, they make me want to play Caverna, yeah. Uh, oh, Jesse, Jesse was saying that uh, David and her played Caverna the other day and it was so wonderful and they hadn't played in a long time. And I expressed that you and I love Caverna and that we should play Caverna sometime. Oh, the best game? The best game. So um, I'm going to turn that off because it's kind of blocking. Okay, well, because of the way we have the camera, we can't get the last two spaces on this track into frame. You can. <sighs> That's fine. Yeah. If, if the mouse gets that far, we'll make it work. Yep. Okay. So in this game, we're all working together. The farmer has left the gate open, pesky farmer. Um, I was wondering where the rest of the cards are. <laughs> and um, we are trying to help, help the farmer keep all of the animals onto the farm till the end of the day. Um, so we are helping the farmer out. And you have the die, you have the animals, you have the spokes, and then you have a deck of cards. And you shuffle those really, really good. Um, so, doo -doo -doo, we shuffle this. Uh, so people are making suggestions for the combined unicorn uh, dinosaur game. We have 
Unisaur, Unisaur, Dinocorn, and then we have Dinocorn, Diuco. Dinunico. Dinunico. I like Dinunico. Yeah. Um, you know, I think story wise, mm-hmm. the firefighters that were doing their training exercise actually left the gate open. That makes sense. Yeah. I think that's what happened. Yeah. So the game will go. So we're working together and we're trying to keep all the animals on the farm. The game will end either when we make it all the way through the deck or one of the animals makes it out. If the an- if an animal makes it off the farm, we lose. If we make it through the deck, we win. So you can adjust how long this game takes to play. The game takes about 15, 20 minutes. Um, but you can make it a little shorter by removing some cards from the deck. There are three types of cards in the deck. There are helpful cards and there are not helpful cards. There are two cards for each animal. Also, can we talk about how cute oh my God. this art is? Oh my gosh. If you draw a card for the animal, the animal runs away. If you draw the animal's lure, so an animal, an item the animal likes, the animal comes back a space. So if you want to make the game kind of impossible, um, you can, actually, if you want to make the game impossible, you remove the lure cards. If you want to make the game easier, you remove the animals running away cards. Um, And then there's two other cards that are just helpers, the farmer and the dog, and I'll talk about those later, but you don't want to remove those. So if you are making the game easier, you can be lazy and just say, we're playing half the game, right? If you want to make the game a lot easier, remove all of the animal running away cards. If you want to make it a little easier, remove one of each animal running away card. It's really up to you and the kiddos that you're playing with and their like patience and time and stuff like that. I think for us, we're just going to cut the duck in half yep. to make this a little bit of a quicker stream. So we're going to put the deck. Someplace. And that would be making the game easier. It makes the game a little, yeah, easier overall, but it's a little bit more random of an easiness, mm. right? Because we don't know. We could have like less lower cards, all sorts of stuff. So on your turn, you're going to roll a die. So steep. Oh, do we need the dice tray? I think we need the I was going to say, I think we need the dice tray. I have tray. the dice tray. <laughs> we nice. played Fiber Find and Play Along last night. Um, and this we have this dice tray. We haven't uh, used this dice tray since so much we were less streaming. Loud for the, uh... The camera. Okay. So green. So what this means is all the animals that are on the green spaces are going to run away. So they're going to run one step Ooh. away. So what animals are on the green spaces? Do you see some animals? The mouse and the cat. That's a little weird that they would run away from. Well, I guess the mouse would run away, but normally you'd think maybe the, the cat, cat's trying to get the maybe the cat's around. trying to go around. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So after you draw the die or roll the die, the next thing that you do on your turn is you draw the card, the top card of the deck. You reveal it for everyone. Remember, we're upside down. No, oh. it's the cow. The cow. Cow's not upside down, are they? No, 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 no. But it's the cow. So the cow has gotten distracted. So the cow is actually going to run away a little bit as well. So the cow is going to run a space oh. away. Yep. There we go. And that was Steve's turn. So now it's my turn. <gasps> it's the dog! The best dice roll in the game. It's the dog. I don't have autofocus turned on, but you can see it's adorable. Um, so the dog means that I get to pick one animal that I wish, and I'm going to bring the animal all the way back to the barn. So this early in the game, it's kind of whatever. But if we had one animal that was further away... We could have the conversation about, okay, well, which animal is the furthest away? Strategically, mm-hmm. which should we move, move <laughs> which should we move forward? Um, in this situation, I know the cat is interested in the mouse, so I'm going to go and I'm going to encourage the cat to go, maybe just go mm-hmm. uh, the other way through the barn. Strategically, you might also want to do something like we have three animals on a blue space. So that oh, means if, you're if, thinking very strategic. I know, I am. So, Steve, so, and that's a conversation that you can have with the kids at different levels, right? right. Four and up and cooperative. You can, you can work together and, and talk about those different things and different skill sets to be more aware of. And I was not paying attention to that. And actually, we have four on the yellow. So I think wow. there's the cat, the horse, the pig, and the mouse are on the yellow. So you agree with my original assessment? I agree with the your cat. original okay, assessment. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Yep. That's what marriage is all about. Yep. I agree uh, with your original assessment. Comments about cooperative games and, uh, other things okay oh and then i draw the next card and it's the farmer it's like i planned this so the farmer when you roll the farmer or get 
the farmer on the card, you get to pick one animal and you move that animal just one space back on the board. So now her Steve, well, so the cow and the mouse are both equidistant. And based on Steve's logic, we both have blue and yellow. Similarly, I think the mouse is too afraid of the cat to come back. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move the cow back. And that's my turn. So it's Steve's turn. Okay. It's so you roll. I yeah, rolled oh, the dog. Yeah, oh, you the dog. Yellow. Oh, I'm glad that we moved the yellow back. All right. So every animal on a yellow space will make a run for it. Nay. Squeak, squeak. That's squeakers. And oink, oink. Um, And then draw a card. Okay. <gasps> squeakers is making a break for it. Squeakers, no! Um, we're gonna have to adjust Squeakers. Landing pattern. Red! Okay, so the pig, the cow, and the duck. And we flip the card. Oh, the farmer! Squeakers! Squeakers, you need come to come back. back. Squeakers. Come back a step. There we go. Oh, this little dice tray. It's so the... this is, oh, blue! Oh, there's so many on blue! Oh, okay. So many animals on blue. Do you see all the animals on blue? Do the frog, ribbit, ribbit. Yeah. Do the horse, nay, nay. Do the cow, moo, moo. Do the squeaker, squeak, squeak. Do the sheep, oh, bah. It was like all this whole side of the board. That was oh. crazy. Um. So yeah. So this game's for four and up. This is a great cooperative game. Oh. Well, that helps a little. The duck lure. Yeah. So we lure the duck back with some breadcrumbs. So um. A lot of our toddler games, the two and up toddler games, a lot of them are cooperative. We do have some competitive toddler games, but you have the cooperative games. And then we have cooperative games that are for like ages six and up. But we were missing a cooperative game right in between those two levels. And so this game is really good if you have kiddos that still like cooperative games or you're still working with them on cooperative games and they're not quite ready for the six and up games but maybe they've outgrown or gotten bored of the toddler games. So this one is right there in the middle. And this one is $14.99. So super affordable. Farmer, farmer. Squeakers, my man, come back. Squeakers. I have just... Oh, See... Mallory's playing this one with us too. Welcome back, Mallory. Oh no, the frog. The frog's making a run for it again. Ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> I'm just, I'm laughing at the idea of the farmer chasing the mouse back to the... Oh, Mallory is oh, playing. Turn. Mallory is playing their own copy of Barnyard Bunch while we play this one. I understand. Oh, good, the farmer. Um, so this is a really great game to help um kind of bridge that gap if you're looking Oops. for better um or just cooperative games for Nudge that age the range. Frog back. Oh, oh wow, and it's the farmer. We've gotten some good rolls. Uh, I'm gonna say let's nudge. No. So this one is also a really good one with working on your kiddos with colors, mm -hmm. um, the turn strategies. You can talk about probabilities, like kind of how Steve mentioned. There's so many topics that you can have with your kiddos about this game. I think that was it for blue. Mm -hmm. And, and then, even just, you know, animal shape recognition, oh, colors. Yeah, we're luring the frog back with the fly. There we go. Um, it is so my turn. It's the dog. It's the dog. The dog has a name. Hang on. It's not Yip Yip. That's not Yip Yip. That's Lily. All right. Lily the dog. Lily is chasing Squeakers back to the bar. Yes. That's... Oh, no, no, no. The dog brings Squeakers all the way back to the bar. Oh. Yeah. The dog is extra awesome. And Lily so the farmer is just, the farmer is one space. Dog. Yeah. The farmer is one space and Lily oh. is all oh. the spaces. A carrot. Nibble Munch Crunch. <laughs> no, it's not Snowball. And then the lure is one. Yeah, lure is okay. one. Okay. <gasps> Green! Okay, the sheep's making a break for it. Bah, oh, bah. the cow! Moo, moo. And the kitty. Oh, and Squeakers! Oh. Squeakers is determined to get off this farm. Oh, but I'm going to lure the cat back with a ball of yarn. The cat is the same colors as Yip Yip. Mm-hmm. But not ginger or pumpkin. No. This isn't pumpkin or um, Kira. We we named all the animals we named with all the, the help animals. of chat in our, our yeah. previous stream. Yeah. Nibble Munch Crunch. Um, Blue. Okay, we got Nay Nay. There we go. All right, and then draw a card. It's the cheese. Squeakers, come back. Yeah, so we just did a toddler stream just before this one. 
Um, and we had so much, I'm going to, I think I'm going to do those in the future. Somebody on Twitter asked if I would be willing to do those during the school year. And the answer is yes. That was super fun. Um, the farmer is the one that I rolled. So I'm going to look and I'm going to say, okay, well, the cow is the furthest away. So I'm going to move the cow back. And does it end if one animal gets all the way off? Yes. Okay. So if they run off the runway. Oh, wait, no, I'm luring yeah. the pig back with that one. The, oh, farmer. the farmer. We're again. super lucky. Aside from squeakers getting on the edge that one time. I will move the sheep back. Oh, and then the sheep lures back. So yeah, I can see how you could make this easier by removing lures, by making the deck longer. So I like that because like sometimes... Blue! Just the sheep. That was a lucky one. Okay. And then, oh, yep, yeah, the sheep's coming back. <laughs> um... And the farmer. Oh, yeah, that was you, Diz. Lure the cow back. Right. Yeah. So, um, oh, I, oh. <laughs> pigs making a run for it. I would definitely, the toddler stream was super good and it worked so well. It was so awesome to play with Sky and Mallory, Mar Mallory and Lucas and, or no, Isaac and Zelda. And I forget what the 11 year old's name was. I think they said it once. Yeah. No, Sky was not the 11 year old. Um, but it was so great to play with them and that was so fun. I think next time I do one of those, I'll just do like one game for the full yeah. hour so that we can really give them time to reply and I can talk to them because it was really fun to actually like talk with them. Um, Joseph, you had a Joseph too? Or your yeah. name is Joseph, maybe. Okay. Not sure. Um, yellow! When Steve and I, so we play to, I, I play test some of these games to see if I want to bring them to the U.S. Um, and Steve and I played this like a year ago. Oh, I can lure the cat back, but the cat's already back, so that that doesn't help. The farmer. You are so lucky with the farmer. Um. And the, the dog. <laughs> Bring the horse all the way back. Oh, all the way back. Because it's yep, the dog. It's Lily. Yeah. Good job, Lily. Yellow again. The pig's making a break for it. The horse is like, no, I don't want to. Um. And the yeah. farmer. Steve and I played this um, at first, and the, the copy we had was in German, and so we made the rule where we could only play in German, and it was actually really good. We played the entire game in German, and it was really Dark. great practice Dark. for us with our colors and the animals and talking about, like, running away and coming back. Oh. We, had, we had so much fun. Lily, bring the pig all the way. Well, we got really lucky with the half of the deck we got. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the dog! Um, I'm going to bring the frog all the way back. And the last card, the dog. We got super lucky on the deck because we remember we just did half the deck. Yeah. Um, so we succeeded in making it through the day. Again, we're only playing with half the game, um, half the deck. Normally, there's a lot more of the animal runaway cards. And we also were really lucky with the farmer rolls. But that is in a, uh, that is Barnyard Bunch for four and up, two to four players. Um, available now from how usa and that one is um that one is 14.99 and while we do have a coupon code the new new releases the coupon code doesn't work on the new new releases it works for on all the other stuff and if you're interested in picking up some hobby games in addition to the new ones we do have free shipping at 29.99 or more and um, we have a bunch of games that are on like sale, and then we have games that must go. So we have older games that have been discontinued, and we just are trying to clear out that inventory, and so they have been severely reduced in price. Um, so if you've been looking for some good hobby games, and there's some good hobby games in there, um, I would do that. And one game, I'm gonna just quickly bring it up, one game that is in there, one game that is in the discount section right now on the website is Hop and Glop. So this is a Dutch horse game. The game is in Dutch. Uh, the, the cover of the game is in Dutch if you order this game. But this game was accidentally ordered. Uh, we had a typo on an order form, and so we accidentally ordered this game. So this game, there are English rules in the box. There is an English sentence on the back <laughs> that tells you about the game. But the rest of the back of the box is in Dutch. This was entirely accidental. But I actually played this game with Jesse the other day, and this was actually pretty fun. Um, and if you have a kiddo that's three to 12, three to 10, 
that is interested in horses, this is a great game for that. It's competitive. You have some decision making. And if we didn't have a bunch of other games to get through, I would say Steve and I, Steve and I would play this. But this is available on the Hava website. And this is in the, it's either in the on sale or the must go section of the Gen Con store. Um, but I would take a look at this one. It's a great deal. We were doing a great deal on this one just because I can't really sell this to stores. <laughs> Because the stores, like the store employees won't won't be able to explain every time or they won't want to explain every time what everything in the box, box is in Dutch. So yeah, it's not, <laughs> that's not setting everybody up for success. Yeah. So we can't sell this one to stores, to retailers. So this is one that we're just looking to quickly sell um, uh, through the Gen Con store to help us uh, fix our clerical mistake. But it is fun and it does have some really awesome like horse components. Um, these horse maples are the best. I really like these. And it has these like really nice thick puzzle boards. Um, and a four play and a fourfold board. Um, so I do actually really like this game. And if people really do like the Dutch version, if you buy it and you play it and you like it, I actually now might consider bringing it over in English. So <laughs> yeah, but there's that one. I just wanted to quickly talk about. All right, the next game. Steve's gonna just throw me at, but we're gonna try my best. It's in a flash fire fire. I mean, the faster we play this, the faster we play dinosaurs. This and is true. Unisaurs. Um. Oh yes. Yeah, definitely. You can use any of the Hobbit games. So the things with all the Hobbit games, the yellow box one, the yellow box ones, they're all language independent. And we have Spanish rules and French rules in the rule book. Um, the Dutch horse game does not have Spanish rules. Um, actually, the Dutch game. Oh, no, it does. The Dutch horse game has also, Spanish. Barnyard does. Oh, yeah. Barnyard. Oh, no, I know. Barnyard yeah. does. Everything that we bring over normally has uh, English, obviously, Chinese, French, Spanish, German, and Korean in the rule book. But we also have the rule books available in 26 other languages on haba.de. You can just search for the name of game and then look for all the manuals in the language that you're looking for. So if you're looking to work on a different language or you're looking to purchase this for somebody that speaks a different language, primary language other than English, we got you covered. The game components themselves are always always language independent on the yellow box games. The family strategy games are not always language independent. So just a warning. So each of us is going to get one of these tracks and we're going to play it upside down, which is actually not a problem. Um, and we're each going to get a fire hydrant. We don't need the dice tray anymore. Um, so this is two to four players, five and up and takes, you know, 10, 15 minutes. And this one, I'm gonna lose already, I know. Um, I'm gonna do my best, um, but we need those. Oh, also, someone in chat asked if the game design contest uh, coupon worked on new releases. The game design contest coupon does work on the new releases because it's more of a gift card than a coupon. It should work, but I don't know if you can apply two coupon codes at once. So if you did mm. enter a game design contest and you got the game design coupon, you can do that. I would just, if you get your cart set, just mess with it. Just try the the $6 off code that you got, or you could try, you could start with the 10% the off and see if you save more money. But I don't think you can do two coupons at once on our website. So you might just need to pick which one makes the most sense. If you're buying just the new releases, then the $6 one obviously will be the one you want. Um, but the coupon, the Gen Con coupon code works on the sale games too. So when you go and you look at the sale game prices, remember the coupon code for 10% off works on those too. So it's an additional 10% off. Cause I'm serious about getting rid of those games because they're really good and they're just we don't have them in the catalog anymore because we just have too many games to put everything in the catalog. And we only have like, some of those, we only have like five, well, they're probably sold out already, we, but we only have like five or 10 copies of some of those games. And we, we won't put that in the catalog because we'll have people trying to order them all year. And then, you know, we all year we're like, it's out, it's out, it's out, it's out. So you're trying so, to get rid of them in a flash? Yeah, yeah, we're trying to get rid of them in a flash. Okay, I think this will work, maybe. What about 
Wait, I'm trying to move this one. <laughs> it's like, which, which one do I want to get closer? How about that? Good enough. That works. Okay. So we are both firefighters in training and we are at the farm. The hay bales are on fire. We are attempting to put out the hay bales and we're racing to do it. So we're each going to take our fire hydrant and we put them in the starting fire hydrant location, which is here. And then we each get a random fire hose starting tile, right? Um, there's five different ones. And do, do, do. I will take this one. There we go. Um, I'll take this one. And you're going to slot it over the fire hydrant. The fire hydrant helps Magical. hold it. So one of the great things about this game is there's a built-in handicapping. So if you're playing with younger kiddos, this game works on... Um, it's a real-time tile placement game that works on spatial reasoning uh, and also just like the concept of a real-time game where you're not taking turns. Uh, but there's this kind of built-in handicapping mechanism. So if you have a player that's not super strong or not super fast, maybe a little younger um, or maybe a little young than, younger than the recommended age on this game, you can actually shift their fire hydrant forward a space. Or if you have a player who's really, really good at these sort of games, maybe on the older age, you can shift theirs higher. No, you need to go one more. <laughs> <laughs> um, Steve and I have played this game uh, a number of times. I have never won. I've never come close to winning. So we're going to go ahead and Steve is very good at these sort of games. So we're going to go ahead and give me a handicap um by having steve start a little further away on the tiles so now what we're going to do is we're just going to race to untangle our fire hoses so we're trying to be the first person to get a fire hose all the way from our fire hydrant all the way to the fire as soon as you get a tile all the way you're going to grab the water nozzle put it at the end and you'll be the first person that round so you'll win a medallion um normally in the game that we recommend playing best or first person to win three rounds but i think We'll just play until either my patience has run out because Steve keeps winning or um, how about we play till two. One of us gets two. I think that makes sense. Um, and. Uh, oh, shoot. What was I going to say? Oh, is this a you can only use one hand game or am I mixing that up with something else? No, with um, you can only use one hand with younger kiddos or people that aren't very good at the game. You can maybe say that they can use two hands. Okay. But normally this is a one hand at a time game. So, yes. That probably helps okay. with some of the grabbing with both hands. And... All right. Here we go. I'm just going to do one. Are you ready? Oh, Steve should name the horses. Steve should name the horses. If we have time, I probably we don't we won't have time, but Steve can name the horses. In the gallop game? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hop and hop and gallop hop and hop and gallop gallop uh, is actually like almost a perfect English name. The English name is Clippity Clop, though, of that game. Hmm. I know this because it says it like very tiny on the back. All right, here we go. Ready, steady, go. All right. Um, so the thing that I really like about this game is the tiles. There's art that like helps with the spatial reasoning. It kind of just shows you. Another thing that I like about this game that's a little tricky oh, is some of these pieces, like, I want this one to work, but it doesn't actually line up. And you can't, like, they're... There's no f mirroring yeah, or flipping. Yeah, if you flip them over, they don't it's mirror. Identical. So yeah. It's identical. <sighs> yeah. It's, it's frustrating. But there's some art on the tiles that help you, like, figure out the spatial reasoning. So you look at the hose position in relation to the grass and the, um, like, the road marker uh, to figure out what tile you need. Um, I don't know why you're so good at these games. Oh, oh, did I do it? I did it! <laughs> I did it! <laughs> oh, shoot. I pushed Did you mine. get it too? Okay, well, I got mine first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually pushed mine under, so. Okay. So, um, because I was the first to succeed, <laughs> I get a medallion, so I get a little medal. Um, we also, um, we put that back, and then because I won, I actually moved my fire hydrant one back, one space back, and because Steve did not win, whoever uh, untangled the least amount of their fire hose will actually mm. move it forward one. 
So, and then you remove the tiles. Um, I like to remove them quickly by just doing that. Um, and then you mix them up again. And then we go for the next round. And then I will remember, mine is one forward. Yeah. Because yeah. Steve still needs that. As you can see, Steve, definitely, I need that handicap. Okay, are we ready? Oh, wait, we have to change our tiles. Oh, yeah. Here we go. There's yours. There's mine. Uh, so there's actually five of these starting position tiles. So even if you play with the full uh, four player count, everyone will get a different one the next round because you just rotate. So, yeah. Okay, ready, steady, go. I, oh, I got the other one that's like the opposite of the one I just had. Uh, okay. Um, and Steve and I have played this game, like I said, a number of times. We actually took it out um, and played it with my nieces before it released. My nieces are so spoiled. They get to play. Oh, no, I messed up so oh. bad. Oh, my goodness. This is why. Am I Am I at the end? Oh, I guess I think I am. Okay. <laughs> Okay, good job, Steve. <laughs> All right, so Steve got his medallion. I go back. Look, look, that boat is not lighting up. Yeah, <laughs> I know that now. Um, so we get new starting tiles. Uh, all right. And do I move further away again? You do I move do. further away again. Should I move too further away? No. <laughs> no. Look, I'm going to do better. Did you get a, that one's your new one? Yes, yeah, new one. Okay. I'm going to do better, everyone. Okay. Here we go. Oh, we have to put this back. All right. Ready, steady, go. I'm going to, like, blindfold you so you can't eyeball the tile you want to start. Because I saw you eyeballing the tiles. <sighs> I mean, it is... That is something that has happened before. This is so weird, because if I ask you to find something in the house, you cannot <laughs> find it. But if it's in a Flash Firefighters, you're just like, oh, yes, I can immediately find the tile piece that I want. But if I say, hey, where did you put, you know, the lid for the game we just played? The what? Yeah, you're like, there's lids? Lids exist? What does a lid look like? But with this game, you're just like, oh, yes, I know everything and where all tiles are at all times. I, I can see them all. It's object <laughs> permanence, right? They all exist. They're all, oh. they're all here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so Steve gets another medallion. So we, uh, normally, like I said, you play until one player has three medallions. Um, but because Steve will most assuredly win this game hands down, no matter what I do, we're just going to call it there. Um, we, we also said we'll play the best of two. Um, so even though I'm not great at this game, I do still enjoy playing it. I do and play, I, I enjoy playing it more with the neighbor kids, uh, <laughs> than Steve, but that's, you know, a whole nother thing. Um, so that's Anna Flash Firefighters. This one is also $14.99 and available on HobbyUSA.com. Um, so if you would like to pick up a copy of this, it is released now and available now from our store. And this is a great filler game for adults if you don't have a Steve. Um, it's a really great game if, if everybody's kind of more um, even. And it was actually really funny. I was on the Gen Con TV BGG coverage yesterday and um they're doing some really interesting stuff with how they do that coverage and what they're doing is they have nikki and lincoln we I, as a publisher i had to send them the games early so Licky, lincoln and nikki had in a flash firefighter set up and lincoln loves this game um i had to send this game to lincoln I'm early so you saying one hand want it. um but nikki was the one that was like actually showing the games and moving the games around and Lincoln would be like helping with the camera stuff but this one was set out and we were talking about it and Nikki just started like playing it because she was into it while I was explaining the rules and like talking about it so Nikki was just you just saw Nikki's hand reaching in and then all of a sudden 
From the other angle, you see Lincoln's hand come in from the top frame and he just starts putting all the tiles <laughs> in and he pulled the Steve. He just completely destroyed Nikki. And then um, we all were laughing on the, the host and I were laughing. And so, and then Lincoln wanted to play again. So, and N Nikki wanted to play again. So she had like a chance, right? So they readjusted and then they played a second round and Lincoln just completely destroyed her again. So <laughs> I really like like pattern recognition tile games, but some of, and it's weird. Everybody's brain works differently. Like um, I have a really hard time with fiber finding. Yes. Fiber finding. That fiber one is finding. really tough for me. Yeah. And that one's a similar um, pattern recognition. It's just a different kind of pattern mm -hmm. recognition. Um, so Playing, finding those games that different players are good at is super fun. And then Hobbit has such a variety of those games to really help you find what works best for you and your family. And then maybe get a mix to work on different skills. Dino Corns! All right, we have just enough time to play this one. But to do it right, we have to change the camera. Okay. So if you get up and you drop the boom, I'll do this so we don't all get nauseous. If you... Drop the boom. Nope, middle handle. Right there. Yep. So do that to drop it. And we're going to go watch the tripod. You're actually going to back the camera up, too. Yeah, to like there. There we go. That's good. And then drop it a bit more. Mm, a bit more. Right there. And tighten. And then we'll get... Oh, we have to put it upside down. No, we don't. This one's the right way up. The last time we did this, it was, we had to do this right upside down. Hang on. Where do we want this? We want it here. Um, can you... All right, just back it up just to stop. Perfect. You're done. All right, come back. Come back. Whoop. Whoa, whoa. Steve's knocking over <laughs> Okay. Warning, low ceiling. Yeah, low ceiling, games everywhere, clumsy. Look, I didn't knock my water over. Yeah. All right, so this is Animal Upon Animal Unicorns and Animal Upon Animal... Dino. Dino. So these are the two new Animal Upon Animal games from Haba, and they are both independent games. Um, they play exactly the same as Animal Upon Animal, but one is dino-themed and one is unicorn-themed. They are each $19.99, and they're available now from HabaUSA.com slash Gen Con Online. And they will be a Barnes & Noble exclusive, though, so they'll be exclusive in Barnes & Noble when they actually do hit stores. But they're not actually going to hit Barnes & Noble stores until the fall. So you have a couple more months until they're actually going to be in Barnes & Noble. So if you're interested in picking up a copy of these games, you have to order them now <laughs> from our site because Barnes & Noble has an exclusive. Um, they've allowed us to sell them. We were supposed to be able to sell them at our Gen Con booth but because Gen Con is online, they're allowing the, us to sell them on our website. So these are available from Gen Con's uh, official store, or you can buy them directly from HobbyUSA.com. The coupon code does not work on these because these are new releases, but there you go. <laughs> Mad and Bona. That's and it's only good. exclusive with Barnes & Noble for some time. Yeah, yeah, they'll be available in stores in 2021. So they won't be available till next year in your friendly local game stores. Um, Mad Bona, I played Giant Animal Upon Animal for Gen Can't, not sure if my stuffed ample and animals appreciate the effort. <laughs> All right, so we don't have super long. So we're gonna play a variant where we combine the games. So I'm not gonna show you all the pieces and all the pieces and stuff. If you wanna learn more about these games and the pieces, go to the stream that Thursday, or on Thursday, Jesse and I did. Don't take anything out. Okay, so one of the variants that we do is we draft the pieces. So to combine the sets, we're gonna take turns drafting pieces and then we're gonna play with that drafted set but each player is gonna have the same set of pieces. So for example, I'm gonna say, okay, I'm drafting the brontosaurus. So Steve and I both get mm. brontosauruses. Now, Steve, you get to pick a ship, shape from many things. One but, of the things you can pick on your turn is which base we play on. I picked the bunny. Of course you picked the bunny. Can I, you have to get me a bunny yeah. whenever you pick something. Okay, so I'm gonna say we play on the mountains. Okay. So that was my turn of picking something. So now you get, it's your turn to pick oh, a piece. Okay. Um, Ooh, I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick the Stegosaurus. Okay. But you also get it. Yes, I get Stegosaurus. 
Um, I really like Mama Mama Corn, Mama Unicorn. We named her Mama Corn on the Thursday stream, so we each get a Mama Corn. And is, is this variant in the rules or no? No, this variant is not on the rules. I need to add it to the rules. I'll talk to Robin. Um, all right. Ooh, let's do the the claw or the tooth. Uh, dinosaur tooth. Dinosaur tooth. Okay. We are at five pieces. We are, and I like the color scheme we have going mm -hmm. on. I'm going to add to our color scheme, I think. Your favorite dinosaur? My favorite dinosaur, the <laughs> Triceratops. All right, and then that's the last one. Yep, last piece. What are we doing? Uh, I like this pink unicorn. It has, like, a really interesting shape. Baby corn! Baby corn. Okay. And which dye are we using? We're going to use this dye because the other one has a metallic, shiny finish, and it just doesn't do well on camera. Mm -hmm. yeah. This one I like more, but it just, on camera, yeah, in, it doesn't show up. In real life, you can see it pretty well. But. Yeah, in real life, it works well, but with lights and cameras, it doesn't, it doesn't work well. Okay, so we're going to roll in the dice tray. We're not going to have the dice tray on camera. So on your turn, you roll the die, and the die tells you which animal to stack. The goal is to be the first person to stack all of your animals um, on the pyramid. If you make an animal fall off the pyramid you have to collect them. Um, in the normal rules, if a bunch of stuff falls off, you only take two pieces. In the advanced variant, hardcore stacker, um, you take everything that fell. There's also the variant um, on here, there's a dice where if you roll the crocodile, you um, extend to the base, and normally you just keep going. But in the advanced variant, you can only extend uh, on the base once each side. So we're gonna play that mm -hmm. variant. So we can only extend the base once on each side, if you roll that die in the future, you just add one animal. Are there any other special faces on the dice? There are. We're going to do them as we okay. go. All right. There we go. Perfect example. So I rolled the question, the speech bubble. So this means, Steve, you have to pick which animal I stack. Oh. Um, let's start with the uh, Apatosaurus. Apatosaurus. I was like, you have to tell I don't know this fancy dinosaur names. The rule book actually has the fancy dinosaur names in it. For all the dinosaurs, um, I just don't remember them. Oh, so that's an amazing position. Look, is all I'm saying. Uh, it's only possible if you combine both games. Yes. That's the All right, two. So Steve rolled the two. So he's going to place two of his figures. And I cannot extend. You cannot extend the base. Yeah. I just I love the bron how <laughs> the brontosaurus fits so perfect there. <laughs> This is, this is the cuteness. Oh my goodness, Kyra's. What in the world? <laughs> <laughs> it's legal. <laughs> it is legal. Okay. Oh, good. Thank goodness. Okay. I rolled the extend the base. So I take one of my animals and I extend it to the base, but it has to touch the base, which is kind of hard on that side because the tail, the tail is over. But I wonder... Oh, can I be cheeky? No! <laughs> All right, we're gonna play the, uh, the advanced variant where we take. Oh no, we don't have enough time to play no, the advanced no. variant where I take everything. No, just fell. take two. So yeah. I'm just gonna take two, and I get to pick which two. I think yeah. this one and this one will be the yeah. easiest. And then those. The other two just go back in the box. Yeah. All right, Steve's turn. <laughs> I shouldn't have been cheeky. <laughs> All right, one pip. Okay, uh, let's go with Mama Corn. Yeah, Mama These are interesting shapes. They're like, I so realize different. it's the identical game, but... And they're so different. I got the speech bubble, so you tell me which one to do. Oh, uh, let's do the Triceratops. Okay. You had to put the thing... It's like you've played... <laughs> All right. The, the, the Triceratops high-centered. <laughs> the Triceratops <laughs> is like the corgi of the dinosaur world, and I love it. Can't... Go four-wheeling, Triceratops. Uh... Go four-wheeling. Oh, uh, extend oh. the base. Oh. I have to be like extra cheeky to get you to like lose some stuff again. Um, it just has to touch, right? Yeah, it just has to touch. I, I haven't like... played this in so long. I forgot how much fun. I think the last time I played this was. Uh, you helped me, didn't you? No, you I were. I played working. the mini version at one of your booths. Yeah. Whoa! That is a cool. <laughs> Like All right, the dice bit. tray means I'm not gonna. Yeah, that's why I pulled the dice tray out so we don't accidentally roll it into the pyramid. Um, 
Um, so when we were trying to figure out the shapes for this game, one of the development things that I did was, um, oh, okay, so I have to give oh, a piece you... to Steve, and Steve will stack it okay, for me. Okay, because you rolled the hand. I rolled the hand. So Steve's going to stack it for me, um, and if he messes it up, he takes the penalty. Um, so, uh, but I actually, they sent me test stuff and I played the test stuff. Ooh, yay. Oh, wait, no, it's your turn. Sorry. It's your turn. Oh, sorry. How does... You placed for me, so it's ah. your turn. I forgot that. Um, oh, but it's the hand again. So no, you no, placed no, 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 no. I, no, you oh. roll. I rolled on accident. We're both very tired. <laughs> uh, you're going to place your last two shapes. If you can do it, you win. Um, do you find these shapes more challenging than vanilla tier? Um, yes and no, because they're unique. I've played a lot of the vanilla tier ones, so I know kind of some of the tricks like you can do with the monkey and the penguin. Oh, you're such a jerk. I hope it falls. Ah! All right. Steve wins uh, Animal Upon Animal because I'm he's out of shapes. Um, and, I, and I lose gracefully. Um, but... Uh, I, it just depends. Like as you play the sets more, you'll learn more pieces. But the original one still has like tricky pieces. Mm -hmm. And actually, one of the things that we did in development was we took all of the original pieces and I put them with the new shapes. And we tried to make sure. Do you want to pull up the unicorn one? Yeah, um, we tried to make sure that each of the original shapes kind of had like a similar shape in the new set that came with it. So like the bunny is similar to the penguin, right? And then the stegosaurus is similar to the sheep with the ridges. And then um, I think for the dinosaurs, I think it's the brontosaurus is similar to the monkey. Um, where are the other dinosaur pieces? So what I did, this is literally what I did, is um, yes. I put, I made a grid. The two can is similar. Well, to the for bird. the, for the, yeah. Remember, we have to, we have unicorns and we have the other one. So like for each set, so like the baby Juno, Ju Junior Dino, right? And so I lined up the pieces and we made sure that each um, set had a piece that was similar in like play difficulty. Um, but the shapes are still unique. So if you're mixing the sets together, you still have unique pieces between the sets, but the play style is similar. That was, it's so funny, but it was one of those things that development was asking me about. And I was, you know, I was, I, I didn't even think about it until they asked me like the pieces and what I thought for the sets and if it was comparable. So that's, oh no, we have the, what are we missing from the dinos? The triceratops. So I think this is what we did for the sets and how we matched them up. So you can kind of see, right? And then with the unicorns, we did a similar thing where we made sure the sets had comparable difficulty objects. Um, this is with the sheep, the butterflies with the penguin. No, the butterflies with the bunny. Um, this one, I think. Maybe this one is with this one. It's not an exact science. Um, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, you wanted we, to... we, we matched them up. And then one of the other things that I did was I played. So um, I sat and stacked animals, and the development team in Germany, right, did this a lot, not just me. They sat and stacked animals because um, what the development team in Germany has is they have a whole wall of um, meeple template shapes that they can, like, use. And so they went and they got, they went shopping, basically, in the warehouse and had sample meeples cut of all of these different shapes that they were thinking of using. And then they sat and they stacked and they played and they, they looked for what was similar but still interesting but then also unique enough that if you combine the sets it would still be fun so that's um that's kind of how they did that from a development standpoint um but you can see the original one which is a little bit more expensive has kind of nicer animal stuff because they have the prints on them mm -hmm. the dinosaurs and unicorns um one of the reasons why we did those we wanted to hit that 1999 price point to make them a little bit more affordable and so they don't have 
the printed, the second stage of development where you stamp and print, um, cause that adds to, you know, production cost and time. So, um, that's one of the differences between like the classic game and the new one. There will be the Christmas edition, which is the new one that's limited edition coming later this year. That one, um, will have a special limited edition 10. So yeah, and then there's a new Animal Pond Animal Classic in Germany, which has all new shapes, but they're all classic shapes. Um, so they're not dinosaurs or unicorns, that's unique for the US. Um, but the new, new one in Germany, that's like the new classic, will probably have that one in the US. It's gonna replace this one um, in a few years. We're, we're not mm. doing that immediately. So yeah, so we just, we're trying to refresh the Animal Pond Animal, keep it, keep it hip, keep it, you know, end to date but you can mix them all together you can do the drafting variant if you have crest climbers you can mix crest climbers in all those options if you'd like your own copy you can get it from the haba gen con store available there picture on the website or picture on the url on the thing and remember these are a barnes and noble exclusive um so if you don't get them now you have to wait until they're in barnes and noble 19.99 each there you go coupon code doesn't work on them and those are our new haba releases and we're late for the next stream. So thank you so much for hanging out with Steve and I and playing the new Hobbit games. I hope that was helpful and fun for you to watch. The next stream is Mega Karuba. Mega Karuba. So we're gonna play Karuba uh, and you can play with us. So it's a Karuba play along. If you are interested in playing along, you can go to habausa.com slash Gen Con online to join the Discord and or to print off a player sheet. So we do have a Karuba print and play if you don't have your own copy of Karuba. We also have Tabletopia links in the Discord to Karuba rooms where you can join in Tabletopia and you can actually play in Tabletopia. And that's actually how I'm going to play. So. And can you play with the recorded version of this stream? Like if you wanted to print and play later. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have time to play the Karuba game that's starting right now or on the next stream, you can play with a recorded one. And we've actually been doing Karuba games twice a day. We do them in this daytime hour slot in the U.S. time. And then we have a Karuba after midnight with Emma. The last one of those was last night on Saturday. Um, and so that you can always play with the recorded ones. We're going to put the recorded ones on a playlist on our YouTube channel at some point, so you can always play with us. But right now they're available on our Twitch channel and they're available on Emma's Twitch channel. Links in the Discord for both of those. So I need to shut this stream down. We need to get the Karuba stream set up. So if you're here to watch Karuba, we will be playing Karuba Play Along. If you're watching on Twitch, just stay in the chat. We will be back. Um, very shortly with Karuba. But thank you everyone that tuned in and watched this playthrough of the new Gen Con Haba releases, the Yellow Box Haba releases. I hope this was fun and informative for you. Steve, thank you for playing with me. Welcome. Waking up early. <laughs> Steve and I are not morning people. Um, but are you going to play Karuba with us? Yes. Okay, then you need to go get a laptop. Okay, I brought it up already. Yes! All right, so we'll be back. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, again, if you're watching and you're doing the Karuba thing, just stay where you are. We'll be back. All right. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for watching.